Ryan, what are we shooting today, man? What about this guy? Oh, that looks familiar. It just looks, it looks just like my M. It is an M4. It's an M4 carving by FN with an ACOG. Oh, this looks real familiar. Oh, just needs a three round burst. Hey everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range. And guys, we've got another versus video here. And this one's this one's gonna be pretty fun, I think. So this one's all about military M4s versus the civilian AR market. And I've got ourselves a high-end AR to contrast it with. But we'll talk about this guy in a little bit. Let's go ahead and hop right into the M4 and what is it. So I am currently still serving in the Marine Corps Reserves, and this is, I'm not gonna say identical because, you know, three round burst, things like that, but very similar to what I am issued in the Marines. I'm still issued an M16A4, uh, but we also have these M4s available to us. And this is FN's military collection M4, which is a pretty sweet clone. And I love clones, you guys, <laughs> I can obviously tell that. Uh, and this thing's a, just a great shooting rifle, right? Again, very similar to what I'm issued. And uh, what is mil spec? Let's go ahead and talk about that really quick. What is a military rifle? Well, when I think M4 military wise versus a civilian AR, I think taxpayer's budget versus your budget, right? It comes down to what do you want to throw money at and the government pretty much handing service members saying, this is what we threw money at, take it or leave it or whatever. I mean, that's, well, actually, if you're still, con <laughs> if you still have a obligated contract, you can't leave it. So there's that. Anyway, all right, let's just go ahead and break this guy down really quick. The M4, as we all know, uh, came about, you know, couple of years after the M16. They needed something a little bit shorter, better for CQB, things like that. They decided to go with 14 and a half inch barrel. That is what this one is. Uh, granted, ours issued is not pinned and welded like the military collection one is because, you know, military. Uh, but anyway, 14 and a half inch barrel, that is pretty much what was set on because it's still a useful length for your velocity, bullet trajectory out of a 5.56, uh, M855, things like that, and also mounting a bayonet, to it, a bayonet to it. Yes, the Marines still use bayonets, all right? And uh, it's not bad. So coming back a little bit further on this guy, you're gonna go ahead and notice a couple of things. You've got a quad rail that's pretty much covered just by these rail covers here. Just push on these tabs. So that rail cover comes off, exposing the Picatinny. And uh, the military collection one also comes with the Knight's Armorit, uh, Armament vertical grip, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you'll notice too that the rail on this guy is not free floated. It is connected to the barrel. What does free floated mean? It's pretty much connected to the upper receiver. Uh, it's not, or to the you know actual Nut right back here. It's not touching the barrel in any sort of way. The uh, quad rails that were issued are definitely touching the barrel. Now, what does that mean as far as accuracy goes? It means that you have the potential of, you know, throwing a bullet, whatever else it might be, ever so slightly, especially at distances. If you are using, you know, a stable platform to actually shoot your rifle from, if you're leaning the rail on something, or if you're leaning it, you know, like this right here, using like this bench as a support to start shooting, I am applying upward pressure onto the barrel from here, right? It doesn't seem like much and you wouldn't think that that would change some, but watch, you know, watch some ARs out there being shot in slow motion and you'll see that that barrel does actually move some. It's, it's pretty wild and it will cost you a little bit of MOA, right? Not always a lot, but whenever you're at further distance, you'll notice that greater, right? Or more, all right? A lot of the rifles that we're still issued to are, of course, coming with the A2 front sight post. So you have your stationary front sight, right? And also barrel profile is another thing to pay attention to. The ones we're still issued, of course, uh, unless it's the heavy barrel like we see on the M16s or uh, similar to, uh, you'll, you'll see that they're actually cut for grenade launchers, things on those lines. And of course, whenever you start removing metal from the barrel and you start thinning it down some, that's also going to cost you uh, pretty much run time, right? How quick is that barrel going to heat up? If there's less metal there to heat up, it's going to heat up faster, therefore start causing warp a little bit sooner too, especially under higher rates of fire, things like that. Okay. Coming back on this guy, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the receivers. 
The Ford Assist is still on this guy here. You'll see in the PWS here that we'll talk about in just a moment, there is no Ford Assist. There's a lot of argument there debating on whether or not the Ford Assist is still needed. I'll see you guys down in the comments about that. I can tell you right now, after 10 years in the Marines, I have never used mine once in a malfunction type situation. Pretty much my mindset is if uh, your, your bolt's not closing when uh, chambering around like that, you're probably gonna have a lot more bigger issues when you pull the trigger and the same thing keeps happening. I'm not gonna keep using this as a bolt action, so there's that. All right, anyway, and uh, one thing I will say that this guy has on it that uh, our M4s don't is an ambi safety. So ambi controls is something that you do not see hardly at all on a lot of service rifles, so take that with what you will. And everything else, so not bad. You know, it's still a very easy firearm to control. You guys already know if you've been any uh, a viewer of the channel for any length of time, you already know that I'm a hater of the A2 pistol grip back here. I hate that little notch. Like the first thing I wanna do is either file that down or just simply replace it for a better grip. So anyway, also to the optics were issued. We are still issued an RCO. And uh, here comes, you know, when I went through boot camp, we were using iron sights. Yes, that's true. And then, uh, you know, a couple years after, or not even a couple years, shortly there after I graduated boot camp, we started going to the RCO. And now I just feel like we're cheating, but hey, it is what it is, right? Uh, and also to the charging handles were issued. I'm not a big fan of these. They're just your standard mil spec charging handle, right? And there's only one latch here. It's not ambi. It's not a whole lot of room to actually grip this thing here, but it's still easy enough to do it. And keep in mind too, like I said earlier, the <laughs> military has a budget. Uh, it always seems like a really large budget. And then when you see what we finally get, our end result is kind of like this. This is what we got. Huh, all right. It feels like, you know, I could have a little bit larger charging handle and, you know, maybe an, maybe an ambi selector, but this one actually comes with it. So there's, you know, hey. Uh, coming back to, I am still issued to, or we are still issued, just your standard M4 stock. We don't get the cool, you know, you know, SOP mod stocks like we have on this, uh, my Mark 18 over here. It's a B5 and that's a mag pull on that one. But uh, yeah, so overall, I mean, it gets the job done. That is for sure. It's a reliable firearm, and it's only improved over the decades that's been a, that it's been around. And uh, I like shooting it a lot. So there's that. All right. Now let's do a quick little comparison of the PWS over here. First off, you're going to notice quite a couple of different things here. A much more aggressive texture on this guy as far as the upper and lower are concerned. These things just look really cool. And uh, you know. The military isn't, doesn't need to be all that Gucci, kind of like uh, this AR is here, right? It, it's just, hey, plain Jane, it's gonna get you know, run over or anything else. You see all sorts of crazy stuff. How many of you guys seen the one uh, <laughs> Marine out there completely bent his quad rail and somehow the barrel looks straight, but the quad rail, it's, it's a mess anyway. Uh, but you'll notice right off the bat that this thing is just fancier looking, right? Also too, this is a pistol with about 11, 11 and a half inch barrel on it. And this is a pistol brace. And uh, for those of you that don't know, any firearm that has a barrel shorter than 16 inches is either labeled a short barreled rifle or a pistol, or you can get a AOW, all sorts of stuff. If you're curious about that, just go study up the laws and just know at the end of the day, the NFA sucks. All right. Continuing on up here, let's go ahead and just talk about right up front. Now, there are some things that the military has gotten right, and like by going with some companies by the name of Surefire is one of them, and this is a Surefire War Comp. And we have this guy on this gun because, well, we like to shoot suppress, and I do have a Surefire SOCOM 556 on my Mark 18 over there, and that's a heck of a lot of fun, all right? So, yes, the Surefires are actually some that are, you know, DOD contracted, so pretty cool. And uh, by the way, this PWS is a piston stroke system. So this is a long stroke piston system like you would find in an AK. And uh, so it may not seem all that fair to compare against an M4, but hey, this is what we're issued. This is what the government said this is good for us. It's good enough. We're going to go shoot it. And now we've got, you know, things like this available to the civilian market. And of course, you know, there are similar firearms like this that are available to law enforcement, things like that. But again, I'm just talking about basic, simple service rifle issued firearm. Okay, that's it. Uh, and also too, yeah, this guy's got a M-Lock rail on it. That's pretty nice. All right, so it's Picatinny on the bottom here and also up top, but it does have M-Lock going on the sides and then right back here, which is pretty neat. And that's something that we don't see a whole lot in the military. And again, that's probably because of budgets, right? Quad rails are great. They hold zero 
very well and uh, we have been using them for a long time. M-Lock is new into the rail game compared to quad rails and it would just cost way too much money to go to something lighter, more streamlined and perhaps just as strong. I don't know, let me know your thoughts down in the uh, comment section below. I did an entire video all about rails and you kind of hear me talk all about that some if you want more information on it, all right? But uh, also too, because this is a pistol, you're not going to see a vertical grip on it like on this guy here. You are going to see what's called a hand stop, however, or you can throw an angled grip on here. And this, again, is a hand stop, allows you to either apply, you know, rear pressure back here or forward pressure against a sling. Uh, so we don't really use hand stops or angled grips in what we do. So, you know, we don't have that luxury to kind of choose all that type of stuff. Now, granted, we can select some accessories for our firearms, but it really just, uh, it's what's your issue is what's allowed at the known distance range or the table two range where we shoot a little bit closer. So not a whole lot we get to do there. Um, but also too, you're also going to notice that this guy has a free floated rail on it. And what does that allow you to do? Again, I mentioned earlier too, that if you don't have a free floated rail that's applying, that's, you know, you have points of contact on the barrel, which do take away from accuracy, especially at greater distances. We have free floated barrels on a lot of our civilian market ARs. That's always nice. And they're not expensive either. You can get some that are super expensive, uh, but there are a lot of inexpensive options out there as well. All right. Now, Daniel Defense does make a great quad rail that is free floated and that is the RIS-2 rail, the rail interface system that you see running right here on my M4A1 clone and also on my Mark 18. Very cool rail, definitely a fan of it, highly recommend, but it's expensive, so there's that. All right. Coming back, optics too. Optics to ACOG is still what we're issued here. Uh, we do have a, a Trigicon plug coming in this video. This is the MRO, which is a sweet little red dot setup and shoots great. And that's something that's really cool when it comes down to civilian versus military, you know, rifles is you get to build this out however you want to. And you get to decide where you want to spend your money. If you want to spend all the money in the trigger, which by the way, this has a Geisley trigger in it, which is also very nice. This is the uh, super semi-auto, or excuse me, the uh, super super single stage is what I'm trying to say, versus a standard mil spec trigger, which on a M4 is anywhere between like eight to nine over nine pounds, and on this guy it's like three. So another one, you get to decide where you want to spend your money, which is awesome. God bless the USA. Also too, we're going to see too, we do have an ambi safety on this guy, but this is also a short throw safety on it. And what does that mean? It means that it doesn't travel 90 degrees, it only travels about 45. It's just a little bit more intuitive, quicker to, to uh, actuate. It's really all there is to it. Magpul grip on this guy, this is the overmold grip on it and has a little bit steeper grip angle than what this guy does. More of a uh, slant on this guy. I like this one. I like a steeper grip angle. Why? because it feels more comfortable and ergonomic and I like the fact that I can put it on there and it's not an A2 grip. All right, coming back a little bit further too. Again, brace, this is an adjustable brace. This is not meant to be shouldered as it is a pistol. Anyway, and it is made for your arm to go through this guy and grip here, use that Velcro to wrap around so that way it's easier to shoot single-handed. Just kind of like that, all right? But there's that. All right. Last thing I want to talk about too is again customization, right? This right here being a civilian AR, you also have the, ava the availab uh, availability to uh, have ambi controls. You got an ambi mag release on the left side of this guy here. You've also got a bolt release on the opposite side, which makes reloads super fast, right? So you're, if you're coming up here, now, you know, your thumb might not be able to reach all the way up here, whatever it is, depending on how you grab your magazine. I typically like to kind of reload like this here and then come up and hit. Well, what's nice about the feature on this guy, and this is built into the lower receiver, is once I put that magazine in, right above the mag release, I have a very intuitive, easy to feel the difference of the bolt release. Send the bolt home, just like that right there. Easy day, right? And also too, notice the magazine release on it. This is an Odin Works mag release, extended mag release here. So it's very intuitive, also very easy to actuate and also very easy to tell the difference between your mag release and your bolt release. Cool stuff, right? Notice the mag release on the M4, just that little guy right there. Works great, you know, and uh, that's really what matters. Now, one big difference too is the quality of the build. Of course, you know, you would think that a lot of manufacturers would keep in mind that, you know, you have service members risking their lives and 
pretty much trust their rifle with their life. So yes, I believe that they are actually built to a very high standard. And there's a lot of companies out there that pass that same standard onto the civilian side of their, of their warehouses. And sometimes, actually there's not even a civilian side of the warehouse. When we did our Daniel Defense Warehouse Tour, if you're curious to see what that's all about, go check out the video that we did a while back where we actually gave away the Daniel Defense PDW 300 Blackout Pistol. We toured their warehouse and uh, we saw where the Mark 18s were made, the M4s, all that type of stuff, and they're on the same assembly line as their military issue rifles and things like that, or contracted rifles as I call them. So pretty cool. Granted, you know, some of them might have full auto lowers, things like that, still be still built on the same type of line uh, from what I saw, uh, just is going to be going uh, somewhere different and, you know, all that type of stuff. Also too, a comment I want to touch on really quick when you guys said, why do you always talk about your Mark 18? You know, you must be really proud of that. And I was like, well, yeah, I am. And also too, this is the rifle that is my ride or die. And I like to train with it most because of that very reason. Now granted, I might switch out parts and accessories all the time because I'm trying to still find what fits me best and for what application. So yeah, I like to shoot it a lot. What's it to you? Anyway, and uh, yeah, that's really what it comes down to, guys, is military rifles are great. They work well. But your civilian rifle, it can become yours. It can become your complete custom rifle and work even better for you. So which one's better in my mind? <laughs> in my mind, whichever one's in front of me and that I can use, right? Uh, in my mind, what I'm issued is great. Why? Because this is most likely what I'm going to have in a combat situation. So I need to make sure I learn it in and out. I know what happens if there's a jam, if there's a malfunction. I know how to shoot this thing. I know how to shoot it accurately, quickly. And most of all, I train with it. I practice with it. And that's, uh, that's the big deal right there, guys. It, this means nothing if you don't practice and get appropriate training. I always recommend getting training from a professional. You can always take our advice here. This again is just me passing word knowledge on to friends. And uh, if you guys disagree with me, that's great. You don't have to agree with me about anything. I don't care. You will definitely leave me your thoughts down in the comments section, but that's okay. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. And I'm also always happy to hear outside perspective on things. And that's why if you follow us on Instagram, I put up, how do you like to train with your ARs? And I, you know, reshared some of your responses. A lot of you guys had some good stuff, especially the one that says you like to cook your AR a steak and feed it wine or something. I guess that's how you raise a well-behaved AR. Anyway, moral of the story is guys, civilian ARs are great. Military service rifles, are great. However, neither of these matter if you don't apply and practice those same training applications. You gotta train. That's that's really that's really the moral of the story. All right. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, guys, is our current giveaway, which is also a military rifle. Let me go grab it. And here it is. Okay, this guy's is the Fulton Armory M14. Aim point 2 MOA red dot on it. You've got the Fulton Armory adjustable cheek piece as well. And we designed this guy here to look and be as similar as to the rifle used by Sergeant for class, First Class Randy Shughart, who is a Medal of Honor recipient and uh, for his actions that he took during the Black Hawk Down mission, otherwise known as Operation Gothic Serpent. And if you wanna find more information out about that guy, you can watch our video unveiling this as our current giveaway. Uh, but of course, I actually encourage you to go and research uh, Master Sergeant Gary Gordon and uh, all of those men uh, that day and the uh, sacrifices they made because it's a pretty impressive story. Of course, we're all pretty familiar with the movie Black Hawk Down, which I think does a great job at, you know, kind of reenacting that entire scenario. But if you really want to, you know, find out what these guys did, yeah, go read up on them uh, and just see what kind of men they were. All right. So, yeah, check that out. This is our current giveaway. You come in with one 20 round box mag as well. That guy right there. And that's uh, a Checkmate Industries mag. Makes good quality stuff for the M14. And, of course, big shout out again to Aimpoint for providing the optic for this giveaway and Fulton Armory for making such a beauty. All right. So, guys, I'll see you in the comments section all about your mil -serp rifles, your clone builds, whatever it is that you like. And also, too, what do you prefer? Do you prefer your... Your AR, your custom, your personal AR, or if you, uh, you vets out there, I don't know. I know a lot of you guys probably have at least something similar built that you served with. So 
There's that, all right. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.